Um, and thank you to JPRO for making this a possibility for all of us. I know I stole some things this morning, so I'm hopeful that this is helpful for all of you as well. I, I want to start with a question. When was the last time that you bit into a tuna wrap and were really excited about the experience? It's like, never, right? Because the, the tortilla is always soggy, the lettuce is limp, the tuna is bland. There's something like pale and pink in there that looks like a tomato, maybe. Um, so why do we keep putting them on the menu? Why do they keep showing up? At the Shalom Hartman Institute, our theory of change says that if we get the right tools into the hands of the right people to face the right challenges, we can build a Judaism that's vibrant and successful, full of purpose and meaning. For us, delivering the right tools means teaching. It means getting our Torah out into the world. And we have a whole research and educational team who takes that process incredibly seriously. Our faculty of over 40 North Americans and Israelis are on track to teach 1,000 classes across 15 cities in three different countries in the coming year. And every one of those classes has been workshopped. The material has been workshopped and refined in our research and education teams, sometimes up to two, year, two full years before it makes it out into the field. We put that much effort into each class that we teach because the time that we get with Jewish professionals, with clergy, with lay leaders is precious. And they and all of you deserve our best. So we started asking ourselves what it would look like to approach program operations and design with that same level of rigor, that same standard of excellence. After all, we know that the work doesn't begin and end when a teacher walks into the classroom. And as a matter of fact, without our program and operations staff, the teacher probably wouldn't have a classroom to walk into. Whether you're running 1,000 classes a year or 10, it's important to set clear expectations about what's going to happen in every one of those rooms. So we have work plans that clarify the, guide, the deadlines, the key tasks that need to happen. We have charts that talk about roles and responsibilities. We have logic models to clarify our outcomes and our outputs. I started digging into all of these old work plans, trying to figure out what it was that made a Hartman class an excellent Hartman class. While the technical details vary across the program tools and templates, there are two key elements that I want to call out for all of you today. The first is empathy. And this is stolen directly from design thinking. So you might be familiar with this idea. You might have seen it before. right? But when we use empathy to design our programs, when we prioritize the needs of the learner along with our own outcomes, we start to ask questions like, is this registration form clear and simple? Is there natural light in the classroom? Um, is the, are the materials that we're providing to all of our learners accessible to people with all kinds of physical needs? These things can seem technical, but the truth is, when you get them wrong, you notice. We've all been at conferences and events where lunch is so heavy that we're in a carbohydrate-induced coma, we can't focus on the learning. There's a dance party happening next door, so we can't even hear the speaker. Um, or we, some people have been talking to us for six hours straight, and we haven't had a chance to walk outside and get some sunshine. We can't focus, we can't think. When we design our, our programs with the, um, the needs of the learners in mind, we create dynamic learning environments that allow our teachers to get the right tools into the hands of the right people. The second key element is a broader organizational culture of experimentation. We're many different organizations in one at the Hartman Institute, but at our core, we're a think tank and a research center. And that focus on learning and experimentation filters out into everything that we do. We ask for feedback from participants after every one of our programs. And then we take that, we take staff time and we dedicate staff time to actually reviewing that feedback and reflecting on what we want to repeat, and what we want to change as we approach the next lecture, class, or conference. These debriefs include members of our educational team and representation from all levels of our organization. And the message is clear. There are very few non-negotiable elements in our programs. And if something isn't working, we figure out a different way to do it. I am an evangelist for Atul Gawande's The Checklist Manifesto. If you haven't read it, you should read it. And I'm a firm believer in the power of a good checklist. <sighs> Taking those core elements of empathy and experimentation, I created a checklist called Excellence in Hartman Programming, broken out into categories like space and place, materials, execution, and follow-up. It won't tell you how to create a program, but it provides a set of guiding questions for our program and operations staff as they manage the day-to-day -day work of planning and running their programs. The excellence checklist doesn't say no tuna wraps. What it says is that food should be high quality, abundant, well-labeled, and present a well-balanced menu. 
The goal is to provide enough guidance that staff understand what's important while leaving room for customization and experimentation. There's so much more to share about all of these tools, but if I can get you to walk away with one thing, it's this. A conviction that when we say getting the right tools into the hands of the right people to face the right challenges, the way that we get them there matters. Thank you.